One of the biggest lessons internet has taught me is that sharing is caring. Without the need to share to each other, the way we know internet wouldn't exist. It all started with the first word ever sent. It was between UCLA and Stanford University in 68. It was not really the first word. It was just the half of the first word. It was the L and the O before the system crashed. But the half word was a big deal back then. And today, internet is filled with so many words and so much content that it theoretically would take millions of years of us viewing all of that content. It's content that we humans share every day. It's the everyday email to colleagues. It's making fun of granddad's dancing skills in the family group chat. It's the obligatory selfie in front of the Eiffel Tower kissing our true love. We share so much to each other. And even the best and the brightest amongst us did not see the sharing economy coming. It was a big question from investors and other adults asking, why would anybody want to share stuff online? Like, who cares about your opinion? What do you think about the weather or, you know, what you ate for breakfast? It was almost unimaginable that we as humans has a, such a tremendous need to share, to be seen, and to find a purpose, even digitally. And we can't stop share. We can't stop share even when it comes to important matter. We share knowledge on Wikipedia, teaching each other about every little detail happening to this planet. We share thoughts and reflections on Quora, feeding somebody else's hunger for answers. We spend hours and hours on family forums, helping strangers from different parts of the world with this super problem they have. And we share and we help each other so much without receiving a single paycheck for it, which I really wish that my own therapist would do, considering how much he's charging me per hour. Maybe the good parts of human just needed some internet to speed it up. But we're also kind of fake humans, aren't we? Because on a different hand, we build perfect facades of ourselves on different platforms, where we showcase and brag about this super expensive whatever thing that, funnily enough, only will be trending this week. We want everybody to know that we are perfect. I mean, the world might collapse if we, for once, wake up, take a real selfie in the bathroom without a filter, and post it online, like I did. <laughs> Yes, we spread knowledge on Wikipedia, but we're also ignoring our neighbor's kid who's struggling with history. It's the sharing paradox. We share to help, but we only share to the limit where we don't have to share our real selves, which, when you think about it, isn't very helpful, isn't it? It's kind of hurtful, because trying to achieve perfection in the reality of away from keyboard it's kind of hard. We are afraid that we will, you know, perfect engine robots will take over our jobs. But we're really transforming into robots all by ourselves. The perfect facades, the 60 hour work week, the impossibly lavish lifestyle. We demand more attention and more productivity thanks to technology. And that changes how we fall in love, how we meet new friends and how we eat our dinners. We remove layer after layer after everything that used to make us human. The irony is, we live in a time when it has never been easier to be a good human, yet never been harder to just be human. Joan of Arc, she used to be this regular girl. She wasn't that regular, but she used to be it. She played a very important role in the 15th century in the Hundred Year War between France and England. She said that she had visions from above saying that France were going to win the war. And let's just say that the French soldiers needed that strength. And it actually made them do the impossible and reach victory. 
The belief in something bigger than ourselves can make us do things nobody believed was possible. Historically, that belief has been translated into religion. But what are our beliefs today? Usually countries lose religion as they gain wealth. In recent decades, the belief in God and participation in religious services have been, has been on decline in almost every wor uh, first world nation. Instead, we're looking for meaning in expensive yoga classes or at a desert festival where we can feel free over the weekend. We are not fully connected with the world around us, nor are we in touch with what makes us human. And we aren't honest to the people on the other side of that screen looking at our Instagram feed as we speak. We create imaginary stories about this super version about ourselves. For what? What are we longing for? And what's our end game here? In the same way we needed mighty gods back in the days, today we might need mighty people. And we create new gods. And the new gods might not be living in the physical clouds, but Maybe they're living in the online clouds. Maybe the new gods are creators and semi-god hybrids that are seemingly capable to do anything. Like, you know, this guy, he's building electric cars and solar panels and he's going to take us to Mars. Yeah, that kind of people. It's people with almost supernatural powers doing such outstanding work that it makes us believe. No matter what you think about them, saying they have not inspired our world to dream bigger would be a lie. We are half humans. We are already transforming into something new. Even though not everybody walks around with a ship in their hand or robot cells in the blood, what used to be us is in transit. The people of our time are stuck in between two eras. We are half human, half connected. Not fully humans, nor androids. Not fully connected spiritually, nor connected digitally. And it's as exciting, just as that it's a little bit of scaring too, because we will be the ones who are going through the childhood diseases. Childhood diseases like polarization caused by filter bubbles, dopamine addiction due to likes, and automatization removing old jobs. And following leaders saying it was better before, and fooling themselves into thinking that turning back time is possible. Because sometimes it feels like the internet is infinite, but it's not. We created this monster with a half a word. And yes, even if you log out from the internet today, the internet will do pretty good without you. But the internet is limited to a limited amount of physical servers with a little, little bit amount of storage that actually real humans are managing. But the stop evolution is not going to happen because we have passed the point of no return. And there's also so many possibilities on the other side of the bridge. We just need more leaders who makes us believe it. The same way internet has speeded up some of the good parts of humans, we now need to accelerate to do more good because we are still in control to create whatever future we want to. But we all need to give our best effort, both online and offline, to create both a digital and a physical world better than they used to be. The problem is, we just need a little bit of guidance. And if you can't find that leader around you that makes you believe it, maybe that's a sign that that leader is you. To be able to make somebody dream bigger, it's the biggest compliment you'll ever get. Believe me, because I get a lot of compliments, but hearing this for the first time made me tweet about it 10 times. Thank you.